maybe maybe a question on the uh, how, what we see is a change in viewing behavior by by in, in younger generations um, and at the same time uh, with services like Netflix I guess ad revenues are more difficult to to achieve um, so in your assessment of future uh, financials do you then assume that it has no impact on the ad revenues and they continue to grow or uh, do you have new revenue streams that will compensate and still lead to growth uh, because I do notice your free cash flow is mostly doubling uh, I think in the next five to six years so that's a steep growth um, so maybe you can elaborate a bit on that absolutely so Obviously, there is a trend where younger audience are nowadays attracted to Netflix and digital media. Uh, but at the same time, RTL Group already has its own uh, platforms, VOD platforms, for example, Videoland in the Netherlands. Um, so in this regard, RTL can mitigate these risk factors by already implementing its own platforms, its own services. Uh, and also a different point of view is that RTL Group's main target audience is older people, uh, which usually watch um, brand shows such as Got Talent, X Factor, and so on and so forth, which are very popular in Europe. So uh, that is why we do not believe it will have such a huge uh, negative impact on RTL Group. And in terms of uh, free cash flow to firm in 2014, there is uh, such a um, low level of free cash flow just because the um, high level of uh, capex at that year because uh, the management of the company targets uh, its uh, new acquisition be uh, acquisitions being within the range of 200 till uh, 300 uh, million euros however that uh, target was achieved only twice over a decade in 2005 and in uh, 2014 and uh, as a result such low free cash flow to from at that year You mentioned uh, a positive factor of the upward trend in profit margins. What is the main driver of that? Because it was quite a large increase in your numbers. Yeah. Um, thank you for the question. F uh, first of all, um, we uh, assumed the in uh, increase in uh, RTL's EBDA margin that is uh, primarily, uh, primarily caused by two factors. Firstly, it's uh, implementation of co um, cost efficiency program within the uh, group and uh, which stands for the uh, eff effective uh, allocation of companies, uh, of uh, companies uh, expenditures within the all the um, Profit centers, and the second is uh, the recovery in uh, Fremantle's operating margin. Fremantle uh, is a, a production company of uh, RTL Group, and uh, because of the uh, current poor um, uh, performance of uh, Fremantle Media, the, the management of the company uh, assumes that uh, the recovery will take place in the middle run, so we assume the recovery till 2019. Yes, thank you. Um, a single party owns more than 75% of the company. Uh, how is that reflected in the board of directors uh, composition? Okay, so uh, we believe that RTL's corporate governance is still quite transparent and on a very high level, despite Bertelsmann owning 75% of its stake. Um, obviously, there are some remarks to make, um, because most of the board of directors are uh, either Bertelsmann's uh, CEOs or operating officers or uh, RTL Group's operating officers or one of the subsidiaries. Uh, so RTL Group definitely has some room to improve in its corporate governance, but, st but we still think that having a solid um, board of directors which has a, a unique and a single goal uh, is definitely beneficial for our company in the long run. The company is mostly active in, in mature European countries. What happens to your hypothesis, which, which are fairly um, optimistic, if we enter secular stagna stagnation, which is very often discussed? Okay, absolutely. Um, one of RTL's specifics is its geographic diversification. So even though the um, uh, most of RTL's revenues are located in Western Europe are based in Western Europe. Uh, it still has markets to grow. It has uh, Southeast Asia and Latin America where it will inevitably expand in the nearest future. 
Uh, and also one of the factors would be digital growth, which would compensate even if the stagnation happens. So in these regards, uh, RTL Group can naturally mitigate that risk factor. So uh, the most of companies' digital assets are concentrated predominantly in uh, such mature markets as uh, Germany, France, and the Netherlands, so that uh, the uh, rise in uh, companies' digital revenue uh, will offset uh, the de uh, decline of uh, overall TV advertising market. Um, uh, do, you do you think, given that one of the a single party owns, uh, you know, mo more than 75% in the company, um, do you think that your valuation warrants some sort of a discount? Excuse me, about uh, d discount uh, to, to what? To yeah, I mean, I mean, you have arrived, you know, at a fair value using, you know, traditional valuation methods, yeah. which were confirmed by other valuation methods as well. But do you think given the lack of control that any shareholder may have uh, warrants some sort of a discount to the fair value that you have arrived using your valuation models. Um, so, f first of all, we think that uh, there would be no discounts uh, associated with the uh, major shareholder uh, Bertelsmann. Uh, firstly, because the RTL group and uh, its main shareholder uh, Bertelsmann Corporation have, uh, have common priorities in expansion of their media businesses. Because uh, RTL group is one of the key strategic, strategic holdings of uh, Bertelsmann and uh, accounts for 60% of um, op operating, re uh, operating profit of uh, Bertelsmann month so that uh, we don't think that uh, the discount will uh, take place okay thank you what is there you mentioned the dividend yield uh, of the company and the changes in that what is their dividend policy and what what's been causing the change in yield so, uh, f first of all, uh, it's the peculiarities of um, media and entertainment uh, industry, as uh, the company, uh, uh, namely RTL and its main uh, rivals, uh, try to uh, pay uh, as much dividends as uh, they can, so that uh, the uh, dividend yield in this industry uh, is uh, pretty high. And uh, uh, w what about uh, future? Uh, we assume that uh, the dividend of um, RTL Group will uh, lie within the, uh, the tar uh, target of uh, 50 to uh, 75 percent of uh, companies' uh, uh, net income attributable to RTL shareholders. Maybe a quick question. Uh, if you were the, uh, the the CEO tomorrow, what's the key thing you would change or improve? The main idea is to recommend to the company to enter the uh, market to flat in America uh, because it's also the rapidly growing market and the uh, company doesn't have any already launch channels there. Moreover, it is worth uh, to launch uh, more uh, pay TV channels in Asian markets as emerging. Uh, and uh, it is also uh, very important to, to increase revenue from retransmission fees uh, and expand uh, non-linear TV uh, for uh, digital uh, segment and uh, um, also um, uh, increase uh, drama production uh, and uh, and create uh, content, especially for uh, digital platforms, as it is uh, one of uh, car current uh, trends in this industry. You, you mentioned the rise of programmatic advertising. How does an old conventional company like RTL Group become a key player in programmatic advertising? And what is programmatic advertising? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, programmatic advertising, it's a new kind of advertising, the most attractive uh, at that moment. Uh, the main technology that is used in programmatic advertising is RTB, real-time bidding. Uh, it's, for example, when uh, different person, uh, different users uh, serve the internet and they look for different information, but they both uh, traditionally can uh, meet with uh, the same information and RTB is uh, a right ad to a right person at the right time based on their information gathered about these users and it is the most effective and the most attractive segment of advertising at that moment.
And I would also like to add that RTL is quite good at adapting to the new trends, as we can see from its recent activities. So they have expanded to digital at the right time, just as its competitors, even before some of them.